Welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We are headed into our final segment of the day talking about the NFL players that are currently on the open market or are shortly to be on the open market. Just a reminder for our live viewers, if you want to join in the conversation, give your input on some of these moves, I will be happy to talk to you guys about some of these upcoming moves. We will start just a little bit. We talked about it at the end of last segment, but as Peacock mentioned, the Russell Wilson Steelers news, the two teams are expected to meet. Now, I'm not sure what the timetable quite is yet. It sounds like, at least from this most recent report, that the teams that Wilson and the Steelers have some mutual interest. The Steelers are so weird because they've been so back and forth in terms of what they're going to do at the quarterback position. And I will say, I am somebody who believes in Kenny Pickett to a certain degree. Not that he's ever going to pan out to be an elite quarterback talent, but I do still feel like he can run an offense. I think that the situation last year with Matt Canada was a little bit unfair to him. And there's still a bunch of weapons on that offense that they could potentially run with. Ideally, they have a little bit of a better offensive line. I feel like they should be looking to address that this offseason. But I again, it does sort of tell you something that the team that gets to see him in the building every single day has been so up in the air about him and the fact that there were also some additional reports that f came right at the beginning of free agency about the fact that some of their receivers were actually wanting Mason Rudolph to be the starting quarterback next season. Now, I feel like if you're a Steelers fan, Mason Rudolph being the starting guy, now I know that he and the Steelers won some games down the stretch of the regular season and they were able to make the playoffs. But I think that that would be a really disappointing offseason, personally, if the plan headed into next year was having Mason Rudolph as your starting quarterback. Maybe I'm too harsh on it. I just, I don't see the upside with it necessarily. And you're talking about a Steelers team that, again, is hanging around being above 500 every single season. But their last playoff win, I'll look it up right now, it had to have been somewhere around 2016 or along those lines. I just, I don't think that Mason Rudolph really gets it done for you unless you are going to assume that you have a, an, a revamped defense or something along those lines where they were able to, yeah, 2016 was the last year that they've actually won a playoff game. I don't think Mason Rudolph elevates you. I think that he, again, I'll, I'll say last note here before, because I don't, I don't mean to get all over Mason Rudolph's case here. That's not really fair. But I think that he benefited a lot from George Pickens being able to house a handful of short routes and just show some of these flashes for him. Maybe it's a statement on the offense that Matt Canada was running. Maybe it's a statement on the ability of Kenny Pickett, but I I just I don't see it there. I'm curious what they actually want in the building there in Pittsburgh because it's been a lot of conflicting reports. Um, next team here is the Seattle Seahawks. On Monday, they made a handful of moves as well to try and make their financial situation better. They released Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, and Will Disley. The moves saved them about $34.5 million. So they end up deciding to keep Geno Smith for the upcoming season. And now they make some of these other moves where Jamal Adams, we know, was once one of the best safeties in the NFL. Health has been a huge struggle for him the past couple seasons that definitely hurts them. I think that the Seahawks as a whole here, they are going to be in a little bit of a transition moving on from Pete Carroll coming in with Mike McDonald and trying to 
sort of reset some as he looks to take over that defense and put them in a little bit of a younger, more of an outwards looking product here. But as far as Jamal Adams hitting the open market, I know that health has been an issue for him. He's played just 10 games over the course of the past two seasons. He hasn't played a full season since 2018, but he adds to this very interesting safety market that is out there because we, like we mentioned in the last segment, Jordan Poyer of the Buffalo Bills, he was also released as part of their moves. He's a little bit on the older end. Jamal Adams is still just 28, so there is maybe still something there for him, but Additionally, a big time move that took place yesterday was the Broncos releasing Justin Simmons. Justin Simmons is the one of the premier safeties in the league, even still. He has been all pro second team in four of the past five seasons, including last year, where he was also selected to his second Pro Bowl. So I still definitely think, despite being 30 years old, there is something in the tank for him. And this makes a very interesting safety market as well. Everybody likes to talk about the running backs that are available, but I think there are a handful of teams that could benefit from some help in the secondary. Now, team, big market that everybody talks about. They're supposed to be all in this year. I think that the Dallas Cowboys should potentially look into this. Now, what that means in terms of financially, I'm not sure how much these guys are going to fetch in free agency, but I think that they could definitely benefit after the way that the playoffs worked out there and the collapse of their defense. I know that they more so need some linebackers, but I think that there is real room for uh, them to go out, sign one of these guys a team that I'm really interested in in terms of them making a move in the secondary, specifically at safety, is the Green Bay Packers, where they had some guys underperforming for them in the secondary last year. A very young team. I know that they're going to have contracts down the road here that they're going to have to serve out, starting with Jordan Love, but also with a bunch of their wide receivers as well. But I think that the Packers could absolutely benefit from taking advantage of one of these guys. I think that Justin Simmons would be awesome out there in Green Bay. But also, if you wanted to go with maybe a Poyer where you're not going to pay him quite as long, you're not going to get necessarily the same production level likely as you would with a Justin Simmons, but could still bring in Poyer and have him fill a role. And the last team here that stuck out to me is the Detroit Lions, sticking in the NFC North. They are a team that is on the brink. They feel like they are right on the edge of it. That's why Ben Johnson came back to them and didn't accept the Washington Commanders job. The Lions feel like they have a real chance to run this thing back and potentially be Super Bowl champs this year. And I agree with them. I think that they have loads of talent. The one area, though, of course, that they were definitely lacking in last season was the secondary. Now, it was maybe a little bit more of a corner thing. Brian Branch came in for them last year at the, the second round pick out of Alabama. He played safety, and he was tremendous. So maybe not a perfect fit necessarily. I'm sure they could figure out a way to make it work. I just feel like in general with that secondary, they could take upgrades wherever they may come. And it's just a team that sort of stuck out to me in terms of there is that much talent in the secondary that is available. Maybe you go with it. I also thought that Ifatu Mel Melifonwu was a nice developmental project for them over the course of the season as well. He and the safety blitzes that he brought were very impactful for them. But I also think that maybe getting more of a pass first guy could be beneficial for them. 
Again, like Brian Branch a lot as well. Curious how we can see this all sort of work out for them. But some other moves that have taken place as of recent, we had Jonu Smith being signed to the Miami Dolphins. Maybe not the blockbuster move by any means, but I, I'm i curious about Jonu because I am, I am personally a Patriots fan and his tenure in New England was atrocious. They brought him in, they gave him all this money and then played an offensive system that didn't fit him whatsoever. The play action heavy offenses that we saw him running in both Tennessee and then last season in Atlanta where they had of course um, Arthur Smith who was the offensive coordinator with him in Tennessee and the head coach in Atlanta that sort of system fit him a lot better and he was a lot more effective again Mike McDaniel is a tremendous offensive mind I think that he will be able to unlock some of that talent that is still there with Jonu, and I think it's another helpful player to bring in to help Tua here as there is a very interesting offseason conversation as to whether or not we will see the Dolphins extend Tua this offseason. I've been on the record saying I don't think that they should. If anybody disagrees with me, speak up in the comment section, but I think that they should likely be looking to just play out how this season works out and then evaluate the situation. Last couple pieces of news here that I'll fly through a little bit quickly. Michael Thomas is expected to be cut from the New Orleans Saints. Thomas has, of course, been, as some people have called him, slant boy. I think he is a tremendous player still. Now, his best years definitely behind him, but I still think that he can be an effective player for a franchise out there. Seeing as though I just mentioned being a Patriots fan, I wouldn't be mad whatsoever if he ended up on the Patriots, but I'm looking up right now what his current contract is at in terms of the Saints are another team that are in a miserable cap situation and they need to look to move off of some of that money and it looks like he would be making 12 million dollars this upcoming year and could be on the books for a little bit longer as well but i suppose it makes sense the saints have a lot of things they need to address this off season so trying to get out of some of that money might not be a bad decision for them and then final note here is that it has been being reported that Saquon Barkley and the Philadelphia Eagles supposedly have mutual interest. Barkley was reported to have named the Houston Texans as his top target for where to sign. This came out last week or so. And I still think that the Texans with all of the cap space that they, sh they have should look to address the running back position for the upcoming season. I'm not saying roll out the Brinks truck for any one of these particular guys. I think that Josh Jacobs would be my top running back free agent of this class, but Saquon is right on par with him as well. I just feel like Jacobs is maybe a little bit safer in terms of injury history and in terms of running itself. I know that Saquon is a nice pass catcher as well, but it's funny because we've now seen the Eagles and the Cowboys both attached to Saquon Barkley. I know that's not something necessarily Giants fans want to hear, but it does seem to be a growing possibility. It all comes down to as well, I think just a plot line as a whole here with some of these running backs is the idea of how much money are they going to fetch in free agency, especially considering how many of them are available. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of one-year deals out of the group. I think that Josh Jacobs could fetch a multi-year contract. Saquon Barkley possibly could as well. But for a guy like Derrick Henry, who keep in mind, he was second in the league in rush yards last season. And that was behind a subpar offensive line in Tennessee. And with a pass offense that was 
pretty non-existent. I know that the age is there with him as he's now in his 30s, but I still think he is a tremendous runner. And I think that if you are a contender and you land him, it will be a big deal. And we could be in for a little bit of an awakening in terms of Derrick Henry really has been one of the premier running backs in the NFL. You could call him, you could debatably call him a generational running back. I know that the success in the playoffs hasn't been there. He's a running back. Keep that in mind. He basically single-handedly almost put the Titans on his back for the couple of very successful seasons that the Titans had. Helped make Ryan Tannehill look like a potential MVP at one point based off of like we talked about with Arthur Smith and the Johnny Smith deal. A lot of play action with that because Derrick Henry was also such a threat to run. The teams were terrified of him. But we will keep you up to date on all of the developing stories on the GSMC Sports Podcast where you can catch us on all streaming platforms. You can catch us on YouTube as well for exclusive short content as well. But that is all we have time for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you to the GSMC Sports Network for allowing us to host this show. We will be back tomorrow at 2 o'clock. So we will see you then. Have a good one, everyone. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great? Nice.